Welcome back to creating a to-do app with Laravel. And for our previous episodes, check out our links below. And this will also include a link to our next episode once that's ready. So this is episode three. If you haven't seen episode one and two, please do check out those links. All right, on this episode, what we're gonna try and do is handle the input from our task creation form. So we created this on our previous video, and now we wanna actually handle the data that's being sent back to us. Let's take a look at our directory structure within our default Laravel application. This is a list of all of the files that come with our Laravel installation. And the one that we are looking at in particular is Artisan. And what Artisan does is, is it's a set of command line interface tools that helps us with various aspects of managing our Laravel app. So to access this, we could just type PHP in Artisan. And this will give us a list of all of the command line helpers that come with our app. What we're gonna be looking at in this particular episode is controllers and we wanna create a controller. So to do this, we can do artisan make controller and this will help us create a new controller class. So to do this, let's try running php artisan make controller. So the name of our controller is gonna be task controller. And this will create an empty controller for us. So within our code editor, let's take a look at that file that was created. So you can see here that my repo has been modified since my last episode. And we'll take a look at where that file was created. So within our app, HTTP controllers directories, we'll find our new task controller. Task controller is going to handle the bulk of the functionality of our app. Well, the first thing that we want to do is actually bring over our existing routes. So this will handle returning the views for these two routes of task create and our task index. So let's create a new method and we're going to call this method index. And all this is going to do is it's going to return our view of task.index that we created on our previous videos. To use our new task controller method of index, we can just remove this existing code and we can put task controller and the name of the method that we want to handle this particular route. So task controller index, and that will return our view of index. So we can see that our task index is still working and we could also create another route for our task index called just task. So people can either go to the root of our app or to our task path. And let's try this out. So if I go to tasks, this will be a list of all of our tasks. Great. So we can either go to that or we can go to task. So now for our task create function, let's also do the same. So let's do task controller and we'll have a create method that we call. So let's try public function create and we'll return a view of task.create. So we're actually going to add in another step here. Instead of just creating a task, we're going to handle the task submission data. And we could bring this into our controller since that's what we're going to be looking at now. So on our task controller, let's paste this in at the bottom. And what we want to do is we want to see that we, first of all, we've replaced the home page, and that's done. And now what we want to do is handle the task submission data. So we can do a public function of store. So this is going to handle storing the data that is submitted into our database. And it will also validate the data that is submitted in the future. So we'll make sure that we're submitting proper data. First off, let's create our new route that we need to handle this store method. The HTTP request that we're trying to handle is a post. And where is that going to be posting to? Well, we can see that our form is posting data to task. So let's create a new post request handler at task. And we're going to call it task controller at store. And this is the method that will handle any submissions to our task path. So what happens if we submit this? Well, we're seeing this 419 page expired. Why is that? What is going on here? Why are we seeing that? What we're seeing here is a 419 error page expired. And if you take a look at this list of HTTP status codes, you're not going to see this code here under 400 errors. 
because it is an unofficial HTTP error. And this is specific to the Laravel framework. So if you go down to the list of unofficial codes, you can see that it is a 419 page expired error message. And this is because a CSRF token is missing or expired. And if you take a look at CSRF protection in the Laravel documentation, you can see that a CSRF error is a cross-site request forgery. So Laravel is protecting our data automatically right out of the box, and it is stopping cross-site forgery requests. One of the things that Laravel does out of the box to make this happen is it has middleware. So middleware is going to run on the request throughout our application. On our middleware group of web, this is going to handle all of the requests that happen through our web routes file. And you'll see here that one of the middleware that is running is a verify CSRF token. So all of the requests that occur on our web routes file, so any of these files here, are going to be validated by a verify CSRF token. So all we need to do to fix this is add in a new blade directive called CSRF. And if we try submitting again, so we'll have to refresh our page. And if we try submitting again, we'll see a blank page. And this is because nothing is actually happening within our store method. So let's just try returning data. Let's just say uh, your data was submitted. Okay, so we're seeing that we are submitting our data successfully now. So if we try to remove our CSRF blade directive and refresh this page, we'll see that our, we're having that error again. And if we, re if we uh, replace it and refresh our task create form, and try to submit it, we'll see that our data was submitted successfully. So what exactly is going on here? So let's do an inspect element on our form and we'll see that we have a hidden input and this is a token and this is the CSRF token that's going to be passed along with any form submissions. So this is what's validating that the request came from our server because it has this, this CSRF token included with our request. So if you ever see that 419 error on your Laravel application, just be sure to add in our CSRF protection. So that's going to be our hidden input. So we're seeing that our data is being submitted successfully. And what we want to do now is try and capture that data and display it so that we can see what we're working with. So Laravel has another helper method called request. And to get our, all of the data that's submitted with our request, we could just do request and all. So we're seeing that it's submitted as JSON data and we have a null value for our description. So what happens if we actually refresh this and type in something? So let's say try and uh, let's say we create a new task of shoot Laravel tutorial video and try and submit this. So we're seeing that we're getting our token submitted along with our new task description. So we're now having access to our data that's being sent along with our request. So on our next video, let's try and actually store this data in our database. So that's gonna be it for this video. On our next video, let's try storing our data. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this series so far so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, if you like this video in particular, give us a thumbs up. It'll really help with the YouTube algorithm and allow us to keep making videos for free like this in the future. Also, if you have any questions, be sure to check out the comments below and you can add a comment and we'll try and help you out if you run into anything. And if you wanna see the code for the course so far, check out the GitHub repo in the description below and that'll have a link to all of the codes so that you can follow along and take a look at the code. Thanks for watching, bye.